Welcome to season three, episode number one of the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast. I am Old Man Logan, okay? And shoe the bottom of me, that guy down there, that that dude there yeah, with the hat on, who's that? Who's that guy? Yep, you guessed it. That is the producer extraordinaire, Mr. Joe Freezy. Greetings and salutations. Coming to you live from the table. Table. Coming in. Uh, Real mellow, bro. Mindful of. Okay. We should all be mindful and respectful of that table and know who the head of that table is. I bring you greetings and salutations. Are you carving turkey or ham? Or both? I do not know what we <laughs> in Asamoah. <laughs> And some more, I don't know if we're doing the pig thing or if we're doing the, the, the turkey. Or right, if, you watch, turkey. if you watch the Yokozuna doc that came on after uh, the Rumble, turkey ass seems to be something that's uh, a delicacy over there. Basted in butter. Basted. Yeah. In butter. Great, great doc, by the way. I really enjoyed it. I stayed up to damn near one o'clock watching it, but it was good. You mean he's not Japanese? No, he's not Japanese. Who would have thought it after all these years? No. Okay. I'm disappointed. As you hear sarcasm in my voice. Like, but you know, a lot of people were like, I didn't I didn't know uh, Yokozuna wasn't really Japanese. Like, no, dude, he was he wasn't Japanese. Like he looks this is like about Rikishi. Huh? He looked just like Rikishi. He looked just like Hey, two plus two equals four to me. But at the time, I hey, I wouldn't have known. You know, he who would have thought Yokozuna and the Head Shrinkers were family, like actual family, back in the day. You know, but I think weren't the, weren't the Head shrink, Shrinkers at that time? They probably transitioned over to WCW, right? Uh, at that time, I believe they did. I'm not really sure. I also think that. Um, at some point, Rikishi was made to be an Assyrian assassin with the mask and the ponytail. Do you remember that? No. No. Taking it back over there, brother. Let me let me go. I'm Google. I'll be right back. I do not remember that. I'm not saying that it's not possible. I'm just, you know, I don't know why saying the head shrinkers makes me want to say the Fushnikins. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, while you're Googling that, uh, once again, welcome to season three. This is our third season of Hot Take Wrestling Podcast. Gents, how are we feeling? What do we want to try to bring to the table this season that we weren't able to do in the prior to? Do we feel like the grizzled young veterans of podcasting now? We are our three seasons deep in pause into this wrestling sphere we got a lot of people that's following us on social media. They're loving what we're doing. What do you guys think? I'm just going to say this. First of all, um, feeling good about most of our episodes once we actually have our game plan. Uh, second of all, uh, I, there's a lot of comebacks last night for the Rumble. Um, let me just say this. I'm going to be highly disappointed if Diamond Dallas Page doesn't come back because I feel like there's a lot of money in a tag team with him and Matt Riddle. They can call themselves the Bang Bros. <laughs> wow. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Can the WWE trademark the Bang Bros? I'll be here all night. I'll be, our, I'll be here all night. Tip your boxing as well. Why? I mean, Bang Bros tried to make the Miami Heat Arena, Bang Bros Arena or some shit like that. So I don't know if Vince can get the clearance for that trademark. I thought it was supposed to be the condo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Reality Kings. I don't know. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, Rikishi was once the Sultan. Ah, that's 
from Arabia. He had a ponytail and a mask on his face. He was the salty sauce. I'm just going to say this too. Uh, the Raw Tag Team Championship designs are brought to you and sponsored by Trojan Condoms. That might be accurate though, because they do look like those. Um, best, the best of the best. That's, that, that does look like, they do look like Trojan Condoms. No, no lifestyle. The lifestyles are like the Brooklyn Brawl. <laughs> the, the red, the red, the red rap ones with the red, the red ones with the red. <laughs> oh, lifestyles man. are the personification of kicked out at one. That's true. That's true. So there's a lot of a lot of plot holes. <laughs> <laughs> kind, of, kind of like watching Raw on a weekly basis. <laughs> I want to. I want to I want to do something that's very out of my character. I want to praise the machine for not um, doing what he typically does and making some old person a champion for like the next couple of months because WrestleMania is coming up. I want to thank him for that. That's very sweet of him. Very sweet of him. Very sweet of him. Because I showed it, think I was like, oh my god. Skinny Lake Goldberg going to be a champion again. Oh my God. Why? 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 I think Skinny Lake Goldberg did not like the Skinny Lake Goldberg comments. And that's how we ended up with the Goldberg shorts a la Brock Lesnar. Except his were less, way less baggy. Baggy. And then Brock. Yeah. I don't care about how you feel about his legs. They small. You're small. You're not lineman no more, bro. You're small. You're tiny. You're tiny, Goldberg. You're, you're not the same size you used to be, bro. Sorry. I mean, I, I totally said that, you know, uh, especially watching that match, Drew McIntyre was like hulking literally over Goldberg. It was like medium bird. Like, it, it was, he's not Goldberg anymore. It's just bird. You're like, it's like Gilbert and Jace. Like, it's, you know, it's, it's a real thing now. I mean, at this point, booking Goldberg in a world championship match. At this stage of his career, if you want to call it a career at this point, it makes about as much sense as like if a pothead decided like to cook a pizza on like 15 degrees for like 400 minutes. That's how backwards that is. Yeah, backwards. That's yeah. Yeah. Gert, that's how Gert that's how I feel about this. It's like, yeah, mid card from now on. Like it's like putting sweet peas on a pizza. I wouldn't mind Goldberg versus that's Bobby what I say you wouldn't mind sweet peas on a pizza. I'd say, whoa. Hey, some people eat that. <laughs> I'm not one of those people, but hey. Yeah. I just want to thank the machine for uh, not booking Ric Flair's entitled daughter to win the World Rumble. Yeah, that too. That too. Thank you, machine, for not doing that. Because that would have just, that would have made me so angry. I mean, already shoehorned her in the main event for no reason two years ago. That's a, ugh. All right, oh, let, me, let me try to stay machine. positive. Are we referencing a particular person, entity, or are we just saying the machine as a whole that is the WWE? I'm talking uh, about that. I'll, I'll just say this. I hope the NFL books the Super Bowl better than <laughs> Vince is booking Raw. All right, let's <laughs> that, that was my last one. I, uh, I promise. Uh, I, I'll, actually, no, I don't promise. Hey, that NFC game still stings, buddy. Hey, yeah, man. That's not fun. That's not your year. Win <laughs> it, man. <laughs> that was a dad joke, I know. Uh, I can't talk. I mean, they got... Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's groove, man. Football seasons. Yeah. It's, it's over and done. It's hurtful, bro. It's real hurtful, bro. All right, that's, so type of, Pete, that's the type of things are. that happen when you uh when you drop Olivia Munn. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh -huh. <laughs> nah, hey, hey, AR ain't been right uh -huh. since. Let's move on from this right now, Tim. Let's move <laughs> on from this right now. Okay, peeps. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna pass this off to the host, KG. We are going to discuss the 2021 WWE Royal Rumble that took place last night. Okay. It was a, you know, the WWE, I think they do this on purpose. And, you know, they've been very consistent with the Rumble. I'll say for at least the last six years, I say the last six years because, twenty was that the 2015 where Roman won? <laughs> and the, 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 the fans just booed them out of the freaking building. 
Yes. Yeah. So since then, I think there has been a constant effort by the WWE to deliver the best possible Royal Rumble. Even if we are not getting the person that we want to win, I think the guy everybody wanted to win, the men's win, uh, Royal Rumble was uh, Daniel Bryan. Daniel did not win, but you know, I don't think you're gonna find anybody that'll complain about Edge being the winner, the big, the big winner. You might, but you may, you may, you may. It's ageism is real in in some of these wrestling fans. Yeah, um, I I just I don't know, man. I'm a I'm of the mindset that I'm, I'm ready for some fresh blood because it's just like at the. You know, at, at this point, how how many times can you go to the well? Um, they're they're not giving these guys and gals the creative freedom that other generations have had. Therefore, they have to keep going back and getting these people that had the freedom to create better characters. And just imagine if every time Edge was getting pushed, you know, that they kept going back and putting. Ric Flair in that position because Ric Flair was getting important positions. Ric Flair wasn't getting world championship matches at WrestleMania. Yeah. I mean, because because his highest, I'd say his highest spot on the card were probably those years against HBK at WrestleMania 24 and then the one WrestleMania 18 against Taker. Other than that, Flair didn't really have high positions because he was in that handicap match against The Rock, but that wasn't that high up on the card. Like the two biggest, the, the three biggest matches going into that WrestleMania which is crazy as it sounds because Rock was on that card. It was Benoit versus Triple H and versus Shawn Michaels, uh, Eddie versus Kurt. And then I would say, even though it was trash because both guys were leaving, Goldberg versus Brock. Those were like mm-hmm. the, the, the biggest matches on that card. Because even WrestleMania 18, that, that Taker match against Flair was not happening on the card because you, you still had Hogan, Rock, obviously, you had Triple H, Jericho, and you had, um, hell, if they did that right, I thought Scott Hall, you know, and Stone Cold could have been something. Right, right. But you're talking about two of the more over guys, and you can't tell me Scott Hall wasn't over when he was raising. So that's true. That's true. But before, let's back it up a little bit. Let's start at the beginning of the actual Royal Rumble and then just kind of break it down and get into those Royal Rumble matches from there. Uh, So Royal Rumble was set off with the Women's Tag Team Championship match. Charlotte Flair and Oscar versus Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Um, it's go ahead, Joe. I, I liked I liked the way that match went because they just went to uh, kind of more so highlighting the rivalry between Charlotte and um, Lacey Evans, which basically means we might get like a female fiend and. Oscar match because I think I think honestly that the actual growth and character development um, that is with one Alexa Bliss has been beautiful, it's been great. So I like the way that matchup has turned out. Do I like the fact that Shane and Nia are on? Mm. I mean, it happens, you know what I'm saying? Because that way we can develop uh, Oscar and Alexa Bliss. We can figure out what to do with Charlotte. She, she's so good. I wouldn't mind Charlotte and Rhea going at it again. That would be awesome. So I thought it was pretty decent. I thought it was okay. It was I am disappointed uh, as far as at, because outside of last year when Bailey and Sasha had their second run with the Women's Tag Team Championships, I don't really feel like they've been showcased and they haven't been as important as they should be. Part of that are, you know, makeshift tag teams winning the titles lately. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like NXT's women's division is so deep. They're the ones that need the tag team championships because the tag team championships are not going to work on the main roster as long as the brands are split because it's hard to get legitimate tag teams together. They have the same problem the men have with two set, and they have two sets of tag champions, but it's it's even worse because if you look at Raw and SmackDown, um, how many legitimate women's tag teams are there? Because, I mean, the men have like five or six combined. You have Lucha right. House Party, you have Her Business, you have Kofi and Xavier on Raw. That's it. Um, Miz and Morrison are not a consistent tag team. They're just out there together. They're not com- completely uh, consistent completing in tag team matches. 
SmackDown, you have Street Profits, and you have Bobby Roode, and Dolph Ziggler, that's it. So, I mean, unless I'm forgetting someone. Uh, but with that being said, I don't know if I would have went that route and put the titles back on Shayna and Nia. Uh, I don't really get this fixation with trying to make Nia be in prominent spots. I'm going to beat him to a dead horse at this point, I guess. I'm not even going to touch on that. It's not a here nor there, but um, personally, I would have just kept them on Charlotte and Asuka and had them drop them to like a Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez uh, because you could do the same thing that they're doing in NXT for the men's Dusty Cup where the, the winners get a tag team title match. They haven't said that's going to happen to, for the women, but I would have gone that route and had Asuka and Charlotte defend the tag titles against Raquel Gonzalez and uh, Dakota Kai at the next takeover, which is on the 14th, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I would have gone, personally. Okay, I agree 100% with everything you just said about those titles. I personally am starting to feel like the women's tag title should live on NXT as well. Like, just as an NXT thing, because much like you said, trying to do that with split divisions is never going to work. The, the, the divisions are too thin, you know, to and, and these are made up teams ultimately. And not to say that there is not any made up teams down there in NHC because obviously you're going to have to compile some of these girls that you're not necessarily pushing as a singles competitor at that time, you know, to say, hey, okay, let's go the tag team route with them, you know, and um, and, and utilize these titles. But I, I, you know, it's it's much like what you pointed out with the men's tag titles. It's time to unify those titles. Like, let's screw merchandise for a second. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What kids are clamoring for tag titles anyway? Let's just be honest. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, when we were kids, we had Heart Foundation, we had DX, uh, uh, Road Warriors, you know, for the older Rocker. generations. You know, Rock, you know, you had tag teams, uh, 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 Steiner Brothers, how New Age Outlaws. You had tag teams, New Age Outlaws. Edge that and Christian. Made you want those belts. Edge and Christian, Dudley's, Hardy's, you know. Um, We're probably forgetting some. That's just so crazy. That's, 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 that's what we're talking about. Yeah. That's, that's just off the top. That would legitimize a person saying, hey, you know what? I want to buy a tag team championship belt. Impact players, team. ECW. Yeah. Just incredible. Lance Storm. Yeah. So we don't we don't have that going on in RVD this RVD and Sabu. Anymore. So there's no need to have a red belt and a, and a blue belt just because it's two different brands. It, you're not utilizing it ultimately. No. It's not being utilized properly. So there's no need for that. It's time for those belts to be unified. You know, NXT is getting its ass handed to it weekly now, every Wednesday, because you're not, it, it, it's an easy answer here. You cross promote on each show. You know, I, I, sure, Roman Reigns is going to be a SmackDown only guy. Cool, we get that. You know, uh, Drew's going to be Raw only. All right, bet. But these other divisions that we have within the company, you know, mid card, tag titles, you know, men tag titles, women tag titles, these belts should be utilized to push the product on all of the shows. Mm -hmm. This is the easy fix. I don't know why, for the life of me, we're letting merchandise dictate what's going on in the ring, but that's how it feels. You know, and the women's tag titles was a big deal. And it, 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 at first, and you had the people behind it for it to be a big deal. You had a Sasha and a Bailey. And unfortunately, that's been the only time because even this time right now, I'll be honest, the Oscar and Charlotte run, I, it, it's, it's a made up run. We know this is leading to a storyline. Yeah. You know what I'm, I'm saying? So it, it's like, all right, cool. We know it's going to end up with Charlotte eventually, you know, turning on Oscar or whatever to try to go after the women's title. Cool. We don't need the women's titles to tell that story. Yeah, I don't. And I don't like it, too, because Charlotte was in the middle of the feud with Oscar when she left with, with her and Nia. So it doesn't really make sense to align with one, either one of them personally. Yeah. Uh, second, second of all, I, I'm, I'm tired of because Bailey and Sasha at work, but I don't need the the women's singles champion going after the tag titles every year. 
Yeah. Because Becky, because Becky went after him at the end of last year with Charlotte. Um, then, like I said, like I said, Bailey and Sasha that worked, but now Oscar's winning it, and it's like being a double champion doesn't mean anything anymore. It's almost three a year at this point, and that tells you the lack of depth in that division. Another sign of that because maybe they wouldn't have the the women's champion competing for tag titles if you had one combined division. The women, there's no reason they can't all be on both shows or even all three. Yeah, there's no reason that I can't that um, you know, some of the women that aren't really being utilized. Like, why why isn't the Riot Squad living uh, Ruby in this Dusty's tag team club? They're not doing anything with them on SmackDown, but having this weird thing with Billy Kay. Yeah. I mean, and and that's that's a, that's a prime example of a team that's not being utilized on one show that could come bring their you know their following their, and 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 help propel this other show, which is all under the same umbrella anyway. You know what I'm saying? But it's just mm-hmm. it's going to help better the product. You know, it's it's. So it's it's unfortunate that they haven't seen it. And I'm not gonna say they haven't seen it because I can't speak for WWE. I don't know what they they thinking and what they know in terms of you know business. But to me, all of this is just merchandising, merchandising one on one. We want to have a blue belt. We want to have a red belt. The kids can choose and pick uh, whatever, you know. And we can maximize our profits at the end of the day. No, we need one set of tag team champions for the men for the women you know hell to be honest we need one male world champion you know yeah, I've, i felt that way for a while too because it's just like at this point it's just padding people's hall of fame resumes to have two world champions the only sets of two champions i need to see our IC and US, and I'm fine with that just because there's a giant roster, so it gives them something to compete for. For guys yes. like a Matt Riddle, who aren't gonna be propelled right away, and you understand that. Um, guys like a Damian Priest, who just got called up, and uh, Keith Lee, guys of that nature, who they're not going to, because somebody's gonna get catapulted. Because Keith Lee, in a sense, did get catapulted with the upper mid card, but mm-hmm. um, it still gives him something to compete for when he doesn't capture that championship right away because. There's not many people that have gotten straight to the to the world championship and actually won it within their first five months or so outside of like a Brock or a Sheamus. Um, that was the only people I didn't know at the top of my head that won it within the first five months on the main roster. You guys got to understand too that like, remember back in the day when it was just one championship there, or there was like two mid-card championships, there was like storylines. Mm-hmm. WWE's not invested in doing any type of storylines anymore. With anyone, it's, true. it's a relevant thing. Like the only reason why the Kevin Owens and the Roman Reigns thing is actually a relevant storyline is because those two those two make a good storyline. They're they're developed. They know how to make a good storyline or whatever, and they're working exclusively together. And then Big Brother or the Machine or whatever is like let them work wherever they got the other stuff. We'll figure out the other stuff from there or whatever, and then give them creative space to do it. Back in the day, the Attitude Era, and back in the day when it was like WCW, where they had like a U.S. title, a TV title. And then they had the World Heavyweight Championship and one set tag teams or one woman's belt and a cruiserweight title. That was the way to go. You had two mid-card titles, so basically means you could do more storylines and build more with that type of thing too. Tag mm-hmm. team matches were hella competitive, which basically means you had to be able to put a lot of great tag teams together and be able to do great things too, because WCW invested in their tag teams. The fact that uh, the machine isn't is more so just a stable that he doesn't see the potential which is why AEW is whooping their ass because they invest in each belt each belt matters in AEW as well as the storyline or whatever the mm-hmm. difference in the dynamic is that WWE the belt matters for your stats but the storyline you have whatever if it's not Randy Orton or the Fiend or if it's not Drew and Sheamus or if it's not somebody with a bigger name or whatever nothing is developed for, for example the I think potentially if you do it right, Mustafa Ali, not Mustafa, Mustafa Ali versus anybody in the New Day is a solid and good match if you do it right and can be a very, very, very good storyline if you do it the right way. But 10 minute matches aren't going to get done. You can't do it where it's like limited camera time. You can't do it where it's like limited space. You have to invest in it in order for it to be there. And that's just not there. But I agree with you guys that there should be like, one women's tag team title. I don't agree there should be one ta- one world heavyweight championship belt. 
just because I'm so used to it now that I'm like, man, nah. because back in those eras, the Attitude Era, there were so many di dynamic stars, and I don't think it's that dynamic right now. Like, I think we got good pieces, but they're not developed. And, and Vince is going to use the people we want to use. He's just going to use whoever he thinks is decent. I'm sorry. Yeah. Excuse, excuse. But see, that's, that's you know, that's why I was saying, you know, that about just one male. Where, I mean, we'd probably never get that right now anyway, because, you know, the show's on two different channels now, and both channels are going to want a champion. So, well, okay, whatever. We get that part. But to bring it back to the Women's Tag Team Championship, um, although I'm not crazy about the team of Nia Jax and, 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 and Shayna Baszler, I'd much rather see the belts on them because at least with them, we could see them. And this is, I hope, you know, what happens, much like how KG said with the Dusty, uh, you know, the Dusty Tag Team Cup thing going on. Uh, the the winner of that, the win, which whoever the women's may be, that they go on to challenge for said women tag titles. And I'd like to see Shayna back on NXT. You know, and she doesn't necessarily have to be there to have a tag title match. Sure, she's women's tag champion, but hey, let her come on there and have a match with one of the girls that win that, you know, the Dusty Cup. Let Nia come back and have the uh, match. You know, let's see him pop up on, on SmackDown. You'll see him pop up every once in a while, but those titles, you know, they just need to be utilized and a little more emphasis put on them, you know. Uh, but ultimately, I, I can't remember which one you guys said it. Uh, it's, 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 it's used now for stats, you know. And the double, champion thing, the double champion thing is just, it's, I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it. That just, that actually shows you that, yo, we're utilizing the same people over and over and over and over and over again way more than we should be. Yeah, because Seth is a three-time double champion. <laughs> he had the U.S. <laughs> and the WWE Championship in 2015. He yeah. had the Universe Championship and the, the uh, Tag Team Championship with Braun Strowman. Mm -hmm. And then he had the IC strap and the Tag Strap with Dean in, like, 2017. Yes. It's almost like every other year, Seth is a double champion. And now, like, back in the day, that used to mean everything. And it's not to say that Seth isn't a hard worker or a great worker. It's just it shows you that they have too many titles. That's all it really shows. Yeah. The fact that they keep having to put two championships on one version. Because, like, back in the day, that meant something special, almost like kicking out of a finisher. That's how yeah. special that was, to see a double champion. Um, but one more thing that makes me angry, too, is just um, I'll try to be positive with two things, actually, that make me angry. The dynamic between a Charlotte and Oscar matching up against Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, it's insane. Like, if you think about it, like Charlotte and Raquel Gonzalez, that could be magic. Yeah. Because Raquel that's, that's, is that's star -built. vastly like she's, if I said there was a most improved wrestler, at least among WWE talents, it's her over the last year by far. It's not even a close second mm -hmm. in terms of who's the most improved wrestler. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to even think who I'd put in that category. Uh, but yeah, and then Dakota Kai, her and Oscar, that'd be some of the stuff they could do together would be magic. So it's just, yeah. I don't get it. I also don't understand, speaking of AW, how the hell Serena D, they wanted to use her as a trainer and she's, she's killing it in AW. How the hell WWE <laughs> didn't have a spot for her? And, and, that, right. and that's what bothers me too about their division because their division lacks the women. So you already have Serena D. I think you had... What's her name? Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa. And then you already got Nyla Rose. I mean, I, you you got some pieces. You just got to get some to coach them up now at this point, whatever. Because, like, the chick LaVelvet, she's athletic, but she's green. Um, They're not using Penelope. Uh, They're not using a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? But it's just... And then they're not even using like Britt Baker and, and Swole. Like they're, not, they're not even using them. You know what I mean? They're getting a bunch of dark matches and they're not even like putting them together. They're not even, they barely use Tay Conti. And Tay Conti had a really good match versus uh, LaVelva, which I was really impressed about. She's got a lot Kidding. of. So, oh, yeah, I can't cut you off. Yeah, no. It's all good. But yeah, man, that's, that's what I thought. But overall, I think with the Royal Rumble, and we'll probably get to it in a little bit, it was just good to see. It was just good to see it 
the progression of it and, and see it build around. What's the next match? Yeah. Uh, and then one more thing too, sorry. I, I said it was it, but just looking at Raw right now, it's just like, yeah, let's let's split up Mandy and, and Sonya, another team that came up together. And you know what? We're just gonna put it with the other blind girl. Fucking Vince. <laughs> machine, the machine, it's, the machine. It's, machine. It's, machine. Oh, the machine. The machine. Yeah, let's put the two blind girls together. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Amen. All right. So from <laughs> that match, uh, yeah, we're going to move into the WWE Championship match: Drew McIntyre versus Goldberg. Uh, I think we kind of already buried Goldberg enough. I'm just going to say I am enthused. Uh, I'm enthusiastic, should I say, that uh, Drew McIntyre retained the championship. I'm glad I didn't have to cancel my network subscription. And no, I'm not one of those people that just goes on social media and rants and threatens to do that. I don't, I'm not even going to say that. I'm just going to cancel it. <laughs> I'm not going to be one of those people that have to get my 15 seconds of fame and put a post up, try to get it trending. No, I'm just going to cancel it. I don't want no refunds for the, the network cards I purchased. I purchased like a year's work. <laughs> he's, just gonna, he's just gonna sit in the drawer. That's all that would have happened. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. Uh, I at this point we know what Goldberg brings to the table. Um, I was watching uh, Law and Order SVU, and Stabler knows how to throw a spin kick without ending somebody's career. I'm like Goldberg, but uh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, sorry. I had to go there. No, but I'm glad to see that Drew kept it. Um, I personally would have loved to see that spot go to somebody else, uh, anybody but him. Um, I mean, they've been building to the Sheamus thing, I guess. they're Maybe now it looks like they're going to do that at Fastlane, I guess. That's the next every review, maybe. Or I don't know if there's one in between. Uh, but you just got to believe they could have given that spot to somebody else. It just... What purpose does that serve? Like, there, there's pay per view vibes. Pay per view vibes are not a thing anymore. Right. With this network, not too many people are going flat out and ordering through Comcast, whatever subscribe subscription they have uh, via cable network. So why are we getting Goldberg when we know this, all this dude trying to do is spear jacking? <laughs> like he he looks like a show of himself, so it's not even really doing anything for Drew. This isn't even 03 Goldberg, who's still like a monster. I think I, I think I said this to one of the homies I also watch wrestling. I was like, Drew McIntyre deserves better because he's had to wrestle against a lot of wrestlers that are past their prime in terms of what they can mm -hmm. do. Where they were like, he wrestled Dolph Ziggler like five years too late. I still had good matches. That's what's crazy. About I was gonna say, don't let's don't say that about Dolph though. No, no, Dolph. No, no. I'll I'll piggyback that. Dolph has been going through the motions for like the last five years, ever since WWE didn't put him in. Because he, five six years ago, it, it should have been him, DB or Dean should have won the Rumble. Because those were the three most over. And Coley acknowledged it on commentary. He was like, fans are angry right now. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler's eliminated. Dean Ambrose eliminated. Daniel Bryan's eliminated. Exactly. Because they were white oh, hot. They're white hot. Like I'm, I'm not talking about ability wise. I'm just talking about like they passed their prime, bro. Yeah. Like he no, has, he, he, he. I think didn't he face AJ once? Yeah, they had a good match on SmackDown, but like ever since 2016, yeah. that's like been it for him. Because him and Miz had that's then that, everybody was saying that should have been the main event of that pay when Dolph put his career on the line, sorry on when he went IC okay. strap and no mercy. That was, that Dolph was still killing it then, but now ever since then, he's just going through the motions to me. Right, bro. It's not the same. Like he has it. He has to face somebody white hot, like like hot. Like if he to face Bobby Lashley now, oh, that's a different type of match now. Now we talk about like somebody like you got to pick one, bro. But like now it's it's, it's not the same. Like, like he Dolph, Dolph he, needs he he needs a new location, man. He he's been in WWE this whole time. He's a WWE product. I get that, but he needs to change the scenery, man. I, I honestly, I think Dolph still got a lot left in the tank. To quote the great Mark Henry, <laughs> I think it's just the system that he's in. Hell, I'll even go a step further and say I think Dolph would thrive in NXT. I was just going to say that. I can definitely and, see that. And that's the same system. It's just a different set of hands that's 
molding and shaping those storylines and, and, and story arcs and angles, you know, to, you know, what's happening on Raw and what's happening on SmackDown. Um, let me spend three just, minutes. Let me, let me get three minutes. Let me get three minutes of this. Of why this is going to work with Dolph Ziggler being on the NXT. The talent on NXT alone is past what Dolph Ziggler can do anymore. This isn't Survivor Series Dolph Ziggler. No more. This isn't. This isn't Alberto Del Rio Dolph Ziggler. No more. <laughs> like, like this. This that that dude's gone. That dude's gone. I, I disagree, bro. I disagree. That's why we're. I think. I I, th- I just feel like feel like he's going through the motions. I'm not saying he's not capable anymore. I just think he's he's just there at this point. It's almost like it's the equivalent of that time, those years when Big Show and Kane kept getting world championship matches for no effing reason. It's like no in 2012 and 2013 when they kept putting them in the world championship matches once or twice a year for no reason. Because the same thing happened last year when Kofi had the strap, or two years ago when he randomly put Dolph Ziggler in that feud with him. It's no different. We call ourselves hot take wrestling, right? Okay, I'm gonna bring some some reality into it. It's no different than the job we work right now. We've been there XYZ years, right? You know what to expect from said job. You know what you're gonna get each paycheck. You know what you can do off said paycheck, correct? You got secondary things that you do, kind of like let's say uh, what we're doing right now, podcast. All right. You know. This job allows you to go take care of that stuff, pay for it, whatever, and it doesn't interfere. I think that's what Dolph is going through right now. Dolph is trying to be a comedian. He has the schedule. Okay, you know what? WWE is to... I'm able to live how I want, drive whatever the hell I want, live where I want to live at. And I, hey, on my off days, guess what? I can go to the comedy shack. And I can try my jokes, whether they're good or bad. Doesn't matter. I'm fucking Dolph Ziggler. I can come here and do my stick because of that right there. Bro name is Nick Namath. That's what bro his name is. Nick Namath, damn it. At this point in time, <laughs> at this point in time Nick Namath ain't cutting shit. Trash. Okay. I'm not Which okay. is why he needs a change of scenery, bro. It's I, I'm telling you, it's there. Even in the rumble, I saw it in the face, man. The dude wants to do more. He wants to do more. But to bring it back to Drew McIntyre and Goldberg, what you did say, Joe, is in fact 1,000% true. There are so many other people who are worthy of that spot. Why did we not get Drew McIntyre versus, I don't know, uh, Aleister Black? Well, he's on SmackDown, but I get your point. You could have went with Matt Riddle yeah. or somebody. Matt, you know, this is what I'm saying. Like, if there's there's people that deserve this shot that aren't being used right now. Andrade, where's Andrade? Just, just that's the wrong guy, right? That is entitled girlfriend complaining. Of, I'm sure he'll get pushed. You know, he's the uh, he's doing, <laughs> he's doing <laughs> yeah, photo yeah, shoots there again. Yes, you did. He's doing photo shoots on IG, talking about oh, my girl's by my side. You know, there's people deserving of this positioning that Goldberg is only getting because of what he did in the past. At this point, uh, Drew McIntyre doesn't need a Goldberg to solidify him. I'll be honest, with this particular match, I was waiting on Brock Lesnar to pop out. Have you seen that before? Of course, we've seen it before. But I was sitting there waiting. I, I thought the shorts was a dead giveaway. I was like, oh, shit. Dolph's, I mean, Brock's coming back. <laughs> you know, thankfully that didn't happen. But I, that's what I was sitting there waiting on. At this point, uh, even though I, I've criticized him before, I mean, I don't know if that's something you do at the Rumble. If you're going to bring somebody back, bring somebody back that still looks legit. You brought your ways back in some random episode of Raw to face Randy Orton to get the match interrupted by Alexa Bliss. And you could have gave me Triple H and Drew McIntyre. I would have been happy. I agree. I mean, he's a part-time. I believe, like I said, he still looks legit. And he's brought the, he's not that much younger than uh, Goldberg. To go, I mean, I'm, I'm just over the Goldberg thing. I mean, people don't want to see him in the championship chase. I know he's doing his thing right now, but they could have saved Orton and The Fiend. You could have saved that. You could have gave me The Fiend and Drew. 
There's no fans around, so you can't say, oh, we got a bad reaction to Drew Penn the Fiend. You let uh, Goldberg Penn the Fiend. Right, right. You just could have gave me Braun and Drew. You could have honestly gave me Ricochet and Drew. You could have gave me Much Love and Mustafa Ali and Drew. You could have, hell, you could have gave me freaking Big E and Drew. At this point, though, you're not even putting, I know Big E's a stack down. But, I get what you're saying, both of y'all. I did, I, I did correct him, but then I search. It's too many, too many options to settle for that Goldberg. Like Goldberg brings nothing at this point. I'm sorry, bro. You could, you you could listen. You could give, you could give me anybody, but Goldberg. And it's not just because like, I because I I'll be honest with you, I haven't liked Goldberg since '03. And after '03, I was like, you know what? I'm bored with you, bro. I'm I'm done. I'm you got two you got two moves. You're bored. Oh wow! And then, and then he does. He does. He goes out there. Spear, jackhammer. He might throw in that little arm bar weak shit that he used to do before, and and then that weak ass spin kick that ended Bret Hart's career. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> we're not over Goldberg. We're I'm not <laughs> over it. It's, it's just the fact, bro. It's it's the fact that right now at this juncture of his career, Drew McIntyre has carried the company. Since he even grabbed the bill from Brock Lesnar, he's carried it. Solid matches with Orton. Great matches with Orton. Better matches with Orton. The Survivor Series match he had with Roman Reigns was probably one of the matches of the night or whatever it was. It one of the not the first night. But he deserves better. Like when a crowd comes back, I swear to God, the first person that boos Drew McIntyre, I'm stealing off it. I don't give a fuck. I'm knocking their ass out. <laughs> I'm knocking their ass out. Because for all that he's done throughout this pandemic with no crowd noise and nobody to help him and you give him weak ass matches or whatever, for whatever reason, the first person that's around, the first live match we go to and they boo Drew McIntyre and he's a face, I'm running in the aisle, I'm stealing off. And I'm gonna say, how dare you? <laughs> After all he's done for you, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Oh, but unfortunately, uh, Drew probably won't be champion by the time we're back in an arena watching a live event. But uh, we don't give two we can ask Miz because it's reality TV, though. I one thousand percent think Miz is going to cash in at Mania. That's this is just me forecasting, if, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I do think that's coming. I do think that's coming. But I think WWE, okay, there, you know, we, we don't need to go to the well anymore for. Brock Lesnar or Goldberg. There's just way too many able bodied guys that deserve it and can be money makers, stars, whatever you want to call them, that'll grab the attention of the casual fan, not because they have huge names already, but because of what they're capable of doing in the ring. And that's what needs to be the centerpiece, you know, going forward. I think it's too many other pieces that has influence on what's, what we're seeing, at, you know, once the record button is on and, you know, the matches are going. Well, you could have gave me AJ and Drew again. I would have been here for it. Nobody, no, nobody's going really to have anything bad to say about that. AJ's been on the tear on Raw. You just had him basically beat everybody. He, AJ just had a good match with Drew Gulak a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so, and... and, and Drew Gulak can go, but that's AJ. Like that's what I'm saying. Like it's so many, the the, the things that he's doing with his uh, enforcer too. Like come on, bro. Why why do you keep giving? Why do you keep giving me stale stuff? You could have gave me John Cena and Drew McIntyre, and I'd have been okay. I'd have been like, all right, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's another. Outside person. of Seth and Orton, they've been doing Drew dirty. Like, cause they they legit they they blew the AJ thing by having Miz do the weak ass cash in thing. I guess it gave some suspense, but whatever. That's already that's a whole other thing. Put pushing Miz three four years to play after the fact. But you could have gave a straight up match against AJ and Drew if you weren't ready to do the Drew and Sheamus thing. We don't yeah. need no Goldberg no more. Hey, it's on over. Top of that, on right. top of that, uh, uh, old man Logan, you said something. The fact that they're not using John Morrison properly either is a problem too. Drew versus Drew versus John Morrison and Impact, that was an actual classic. And you could have used that the right way. You could use that as a setup match for Miz. How yeah. do you want to do it? Yeah. 
Yeah, at this point, like if you don't give if you don't give me Drew and Dolph Ziggler at a pay per view, why can't we get John Morrison at this point? Because you just that you just throwing guys in matches. At least John Morrison's been gone for some time, so it's like okay, you know, even though we know he's not gonna win either, it's still something different. Like yeah. the Drew and Dolph thing, I guess, kind of needed to be done because. Yeah. Yeah. They were former tag team partners and they wanted the straps together and they had honestly one of the better tag team matches on the main roster that year at Hell in a Cell against uh, Seth and Dean. But, um, I mean, there's so much more you could do. You could do stuff special. It could just, it could have been a one-off. You could have, you could experiment with getting NXT guys. You could have gave me Tommaso Ciampa and Drew McIntyre. God, that match. Oh, that just brings pain and all types of great stuff. Yes. I'm you said Tommaso Ciampa, but I, I don't know why my mind did this. Drew McIntyre versus Timothy Thatcher. No, I was thinking that too. There's another one. If you were. Okay. If, here's the thing, though. You said who else could we have gotten? They weren't going to do this. But here's a name that could have won the Rumble Dark Horse. You could have threw Karrion Cross in there. And did uh, him versus Drew at Mania. Seriously. You guys are killing me with these match lineups. You guys are. So, I don't know. It's just they had too many options. We don't even have to go with Raw guys. So, so you guys said SmackDown. I was like, they, so I kind of see why you guys said that, though, because they do do. They do do. <laughs> they do crossovers once every three or four months. Yeah. So, like you guys are saying, they, that's why they could have did those guys. So, I'm my fault for correcting y'all. But, yeah, because you can do that since they're doing those crossovers. Um... We know he's way past his prime. It's another guy. You could have gave me Jeff Hardy, and I've been fine with it. I'm not gonna be like falling over my seat to see that, but I mean, Jeff Hardy still can do a decent amount of stuff in the ring. He's not yeah. in his prime anymore, but he's not embarrassing himself. There you have it. Right. I guess that we come full circle just to say that. All right, <laughs> but Jeff Hardy, but Jeff Hardy, like, like if you're gonna do Drew a certain way, bro, like Jeff Hardy knows how to get beat up. Okay, like you know. Goldberg, Jack Hammer was too stiff. He's like, what do I do now? <laughs> he almost dropped him. <laughs> he almost dropped him. Gold, Gold, Goldberg is, bro, if you call him again, like, just expect to have the ambulance right next to the ring because somebody's going to break their <laughs> goddamn neck because he's trying to do a Jack Hammer. Like, it's, it's, it's a done deal. It's a, it's, a, it's a, We're done here. Like, let's stop this. Um, All right, let, let's move on to something more positive. I'll, I'll say this. Um... Carmella and Sasha have actually, they shut me up because I thought that was just going to be unwatchable, but they had a solid match at TLC that exceeded expectations. Um, last night was another good match. It wasn't like as good as their TLC match, but like I said, I, I have nothing but praise for them because they've made that feud actually interesting. I was just thinking like based on Carmella's first run with the championship, like this is going to be bad. Mm. <laughs> been a good feud though. It's probably been one of the better women outside of Sasha and Bailey. It's been one of the better women's feuds for the championship uh, on SmackDown over the last few years because I thought they did Bailey dirty. They did her just as dirty as Drew. They didn't give her nothing to work with. That's why I was talking about the brand school while all the women need to be on one show. Because outside of Sasha, I didn't care about any of her feuds, I'm going to be honest. And there's nothing to do with Bailey because, I mean, there's nothing she can't do. She's proven she can talk as a heel or a face, been better at talker as a heel. Um, they just didn't give her compelling feuds, but uh, that's not here nor there. Uh, but yeah, so what did you guys you mean? You match? didn't like the Lacey Evans Bailey feud? No one liked that feud. I need to see <laughs> Bailey. I don't need to hear nothing about Bailey compete against somebody about some unsweetened iced tea. <laughs> I don't need to see none of that. I'm not here for that. That's another person that should have stayed in NXT, too. Yeah, for a long time. Because she could, should, yeah, not. <laughs> it's not she brings that to the table. She has some, a decent, she has some, like, stuff that looks legit. Like that, that twist in Moonsault, even though I've seen KO do that before, too, but still, that's not a hero. The point is she can pull it off. So I'm not going to just, because there are no, no ideas original, as, as someone said before. Um, but, no, nah, like, so yeah, I just <laughs> what y'all think of the uh, Carmella and Sasha? Uh, <laughs> I want to give Carmella her flowers now. You want to give Carmella flowers, or you want to give Reginald flowers? 
I want to give Carmelo a dub. Because Reginald being right. the new Virgil is working. Reg, Reginald, be nice Reginald got more personality than Virgil. Yeah. Reg, yeah. So you, that's not very nice if you say that. Because Reginald is way more. I personal. mean, that's a Virgil esque role. Like he um, totally. No, I get what you. No, I know. Yeah. But get it. Virgil on the. <laughs> Virgil out here looking bad, bro. Virgil ain't doing corks, corkscrew for four roles. So no. I bet you I get Virgil left <laughs> for an interview. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be our last episode. <laughs> they don't think we like, huh? I mean, it's black. Like, we are here. But I think honestly, with Carmelo, we're like. <laughs> <I don't think laughs> Oh, I'm going to hell. Shut up. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. All right, Virgil. <laughs> we had his music on our podcast. Don't do that. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. the theme song. Yeah. Go <laughs> 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 to the beginning. <laughs> ah, look, look. Okay, wait. I'm trying to focus. My stomach hurt. <laughs> I got to focus. Wait, let me focus. Okay. Ah, all right. So look, I'm gonna give Carmela her flowers now because she has potential to be a really, really good heel. She has potential. The problem is that her mood skills are very limited and that even though she has the right heel attitude, she just has to get back in the lab and just develop more, bro. Like, she's got to be more creative. Because she she did the, the leader dive, like the Monday Night Raw leader dive that she did or whatever. Mm -hmm. That was unexpected. I didn't expect her to do that. She probably won't ever do it again. But that was, <laughs> that, that was unexpected. But I think and once her mood set grows and she actually gets comfortable in the ring, like really being with like, the big, the big deal, folks. Like with well, Dana Brooke, she will been Brooke that's all day. Like, man, like, maybe Cross, what they saying? You know what I'm saying? But with like the four horsewomen, she always struggles with because she sees the aura or whatever, and it's like the glow and shit. And she don't want to do it, but she did a, a decent job with Sasha. Sasha, I take back what I said about Sasha too. She's a kid. I was wrong. I was wrong. Sasha, was way better than what I give her credit for. And I apologize. In fact, I'm sorry, Mercedes. So, yeah, that's because they actually start pushing because they're afraid she's going to make that trip. She's going to switch that hair color. AEW. <laughs> she's going from uh, SmackDown Blue to Dynamite, Dynamite Orange Red. <laughs> that's why That's why they finally gave her flowers. Like, all right, we had, they had a creative. All right, we had to stop, like, you know, actually taking titles off her before she defends it and successfully defends it. Right. Um, no, I like... I like this Sasha uh, way more than I like Sasha when she got called up in 2016 or she got called up in 2015 but when they pushed her as a baby face. Not just because she kept losing, but like this seems like more natural where it's it's in between baby face and twin. It's like Ruth of the Aggression baby face. That's what we're kind of getting with her. That's how I'm glad I, I'm you right. brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up because I totally was going to ask, is Sasha supposed to be a tweener right now, a face or, or, or what? Because she started doing that laugh during her heel run and look, <laughs> and I was yeah. just kind of like, <laughs> right, it's, that shit is super irritating, but I'm like, all right, that works for you, works for me. But I, I, it just had me confused because I'm like, is, what is she supposed to be? Like, I'm thinking a tweener only because of what happened with the women results of the uh, Rumble, who won that. But um, as far as the Carmella Sasha match, Joe, I was going to say, how many moves does Carmella have? Three. She has three. Okay, so Carmella has more moves than Goldberg. I'm just making sure I'm following correctly. And... Three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Because that... Oh, that oh diving, she has three and a half. That, that, that dive. That she <laughs> That'll be... That's the end. Like, she'll never do that dive again. Because she, she scared herself. She scared yeah. herself doing that dive. Yeah, I thought she busted her nose open when she landed. Me too. I'm it, did, it did look like it, yeah. That Sasha got that. Um, that's that Mandalorian laugh money. That's what that is. Sasha, yes. Yeah, that's like, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be <laughs> for it. You're right. That's from the Mandalorian. You're right, bro. My bad. Everybody everybody thought it was going to be Charlotte. Nah, it's going to be me. It's going to be me. That's, I'm going that's to Hollywood she in her first. bag. <laughs> I'm going to Hollywood first. <laughs> hey, that's accurate. We didn't put that as like a sound bite. Whenever Yo. like somebody say something outlandish, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be our new boom. But only for right. like once or twice. We can't do like every episode. Otherwise, we're gonna like lose viewership and stuff. All right, uh, I'll, get, I'll get to this next one. I got it. I got it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna move on. What do you say? 
needs a moment. <laughs> he said he needs a moment. moment. Uh, uh, we can uh, <laughs> move on to the, what was the Universal Championship, right? Because there's only five matches on the main card, right? Uh, actually, they had the Women's Royal Rumble after that, Carmella. Oh, uh, hey, you're right. I'm mad. Yeah, I skipped right over. Yes. That was not intentional. We were going to kind of ask for order. Yes. Uh, let me say this about the Rumble. I'm extremely satisfied with who won. Uh, I was surprised. Yeah. I was honestly, she she was my favorite to, pick, to win it. Um, Bianca Belair was. But when Rhea came out, I was like, oh, Rhea might win. Yeah. Because I wasn't I wasn't sure completely if she was going to be in there. Uh I think this is the right spot or the right the right choice, should I say? Uh, not that Rhea couldn't have an amazing match against Sasha or Asuka, assuming that they're the ones who are going to keep the championship going into WrestleMania. I just think it's time. Bianca Belair is like she just oozes star power to me. Um, yeah, she's char- She's easily one of the most charismatic talents on the roster. Uh, I, I can't say anything bad about the young lady. Uh, it's she didn't get the NXT Women's Championship while she was down. She had a few opportunities at that said championship, but I, I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm assuming it will be Sasha that she challenges. I'm looking forward to it. They both have the, they both just lose the confidence. Um, so that's why I think it's fine doing that match where you don't necessarily need a definitive heel or face, mm-hmm. especially with the Thunderdome and everything like that. Even though they'll be fans at WrestleMania. I'm fine with it. I'm all for it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Bianca from the start was one of my favorites uh, to win the Rumble. Um, Bailey also was somebody I thought was a good, was a good pick. I think Bailey was my dark horse pick for the Women's Rumble. But um, those two women started out the Rumble. You know, Bailey and her had feuded for the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, Bianca got the W on SmackDown. So, you know, my, my whole theory is believe in the swerve. If who is, who is ever going into something looking as, as strong as Bianca did, I was not expecting her to win. I was thinking we probably were going to see the Bailey. Um, I didn't know if Rhea was going to be in it. Rhea was somebody else in the back of my mind. I was like, okay, I mm-hmm. wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad if, if, uh, Rhea were to win. Um, but overall, though, I, I think the women's rumble was very strong. We got a couple of surprises. I think uh, what did we get? Did we get a uh, Victoria was one of the surprises. Um, Shotzi from NXT was on. It was in the uh, rumble. Um, Naomi made her comeback, so that was always good. To see Naomi finally coming back, doing her thing. Um, but uh, who else? Uh, Jilly. What did you think about Jilly making her? Uh, let me see. I'm trying to see how to sensationalize it, but her making return her, 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 was, was that usually a return. I don't even <laughs> want to use comeback. Comeback usually a lot of people they they, they think fondly when they can come back. <laughs> right, right. I'm just happy that that hideous uh, growth thing on our face gimmick is long gone. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what that was about. That was probably <laughs> one of the worst gimmicks possibly in the last 20 years. But um, I'm especially surprised to see some of those NXT talents in there. Uh, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised though, because it kind of goes to speaks to the fact that there's not enough women on the main roster to do that without a lot of surprises. And, yeah. Uh, with that being said, I was a little disappointed. That's the only knock I'll say about the Rumble. I was disappointed that Shotzi was the first woman eliminated. Uh, just because she's super over. Yeah. But other than that, I don't have any complaints. I, I, I think I've gone on enough rants tonight. <laughs> Try to keep it positive. Child no, I think it was, yeah, I think they did the women's rumble pretty good. Uh, you know, they, they 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 kept the returns to a minimum, and the people that did return, they had a nice little showing. Um, Alicia Fox returned, and she had the little segment there with our truth in the twenty four seven title. Hilarious. I mean, even in the midst <laughs> of the rumble. I'm sitting there on the floor laughing my ass off. At our, I'm like, I, I should be mad at this, but I'm. It's, it's he's too good. Yeah, I was mad at first until he said, "Oh, we're on Rumble, my bad." <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, yo, I it's it's making a mockery of a title. I get it, you mm-hmm. know. 
our truth is a guy that proved he could win the big title when he was in NWA and he won the NWA championship. Um, I, I, I had so much high hopes for him when he initially came back. Uh, fortunately, that didn't happen. Um, but he seems to be comfortable in the role that he's in. And, you know, if he's able to support his family off that and, and live his dreams off that, hey, I'm good with it. But, you know, every time I, I would have thought it would have gotten stale by now. But the 24-7, you know, title thing, it's 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 still amusing. So, you know. Yeah. But uh, Bianca winning, uh, I, hey, I, I can't, I can't say enough uh, how happy I was for her. Um, I do have a hot take. I do think there's going to be a certain few that comes from this. Uh, I do think we'll see Hill uh, Rhea return, possibly at Mania, costing her the match or something. That would be kind of good to see them kind of go at it. Maybe Rhea align herself with Sasha or. Mm -hmm. You know, some to that degree, or necessarily doesn't have to align with Sasha. She could just kind of be like, "Yo, you took my spot." You know, maybe, maybe we get new blood. Maybe, maybe she's the one that challenges Asuka. We didn't even think about the possibility of, yet yeah, of who's going to challenge for the Raw in this champion. Maybe that's what we'll that get. Too. That you know, too. Or, or we get the rematch. I'm not, I'm not crazy about potentially seeing Charlotte win another championship. Um, yeah, you're not gonna be a negative again. I try to give positive people, folks, <laughs> but uh, you can see. <laughs> You see things come full circle. You see the chase of that, you know, when Rhea gets gets her uh, her payback, you know, where yeah. she, because Charlotte won the NXT Women's Championship last year mm -hmm. uh, after winning the Rumble. So, um, but they could use a stronger heel on Raw. So maybe that's what happens. Maybe Rhea turns, and that's the WrestleMania match. Like I said we get new blood on both shows. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the crowning moments for Rhea and Bianca, which I think, I mean, they're clearly going to be the cornerstones within the next five to 10 years. And they're young enough too, where it's mm -hmm. like, because Rhea's not even 25. I think Bianca might bar barely be 30. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. So let's do a little fact check and let's see. She's 31, but eh, still. For five, oh. for the next five years or so, like I said, Rhea will still be. And that's not to say Bianca. That's not to say she won't be around. Because look at some yeah, people. Bianca, I mean, because Bob, yeah, because yeah, Bobby Lashley's in his forties and he looks better than ever. Man, at least I in WWE, yeah, I didn't see his impact stuff, so I can't speak to yeah. that. But yeah. So um, you know, those those two women. When I look at those two uh, being uh, Rhea and Bianca, I I immediately placed them even though they haven't put the work in just yet on the main roster um i put her i put both of them up there with the four horse women um I, I i think they they um they have what it takes and, and and you know i look forward to the the beckys versus the biancas the beckys versus ria uh charlotte and you know Bianca, Rhea, we've seen that, but, you know, seeing them versus the Sashas versus the Baileys, mm -hmm. um, you know, those are going to be great, great matches when they do happen. I mean, we saw Bianca and Bailey already, right. but, um, you know, just saying in that in that vein, it's going to be awesome to see those women go about this and, 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 and showing that they're the rightful heirs to that four horse women throne. Well, not necessarily the heirs, just they need to be you know, and they're working toward that. You know what I'm saying? They in mm -hmm. the same discussion. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I got no complaints about the women rumble. Um, my favorite one, and a couple of people that I did have that if she didn't by chance win, uh, they had good showings. So I, I was good with it. Guys, name there. I just kind of got raw, and that's why I kind of been looking away just to see what happened over there. But. uh yeah, no, it's I, I. That's my only gripe with the women's rumble. Um, I thought it was good that they had. Kind of, it was kind of like that. And I'm not saying they're in the same level as them. So before y'all start putting in comments on this episode, but it reminded me of 05 with Batista and John Cena, where you clearly knew they were going to be the future, at least for the next five years or so. Um, right. Cena's. Tenure was longer, but I remember 2005 when they were the finals too. You know, although they're, um, <clears throat> although Bianca's about five or six years, or 
maybe six or seven years older than Rhea. Um, well, she, she, Batista's about six or seven years older than Cena, though. So it kind of still speaks to that. Like, you still knew they were going to be the cornerstones. They were kind of hinting at, hinting at that. Um, so by putting them in the last two, the two up and comers, so to speak. Right, right. All right, man. Uh, let's see. From there, I believe we had the Universal Championship match, uh, Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens in a last man standing match. Yeah, that was that was definitely that was a war, man. Um, I they went with the golf cart spot. I thought it was hilarious. Although I would have, I <laughs> I would have been. Although it would have been I, the one thing I will say though is possibly maybe they should have had KO do that to Roman. Mm-hmm. But I guess it's more vicious for a heel to do that. And you don't want right. them people the stands of AEW because for some some reason some people can't enjoy both. You don't want them completely because you know they reference that when uh, Kenny and, and Matt hit Sammy. Yeah, but they chased him. See, there's another big difference too, though. They kind of chased him down and made it theatrical. Roman just flat out ran him over. So. Yeah, I, I didn't see that part coming at all. It was just like, <laughs> oh man, all right. <laughs> right. Um, KO with that swan time off the top of the forklift. They definitely did some innovative stuff. Um, the one thing I did think was weird was that when that second referee came out. Roman clearly didn't get to his feet because him and Paul were trying to uh, unhandcuff him. Mm-hmm. But they botched that spot. That's yeah. the only... So I did say two... So no, actually, that's the only thing I'll say about that match. Other than that, I, I thought it was um great last man standing match. Both guys left it all on the lines. Um, <laughs> and it was a trash talk that they were doing to each other, too. And <laughs> K.O. was like, what is that? Is that tribal blood you're bleeding? <laughs> So yeah, it was it was it was pretty entertaining. It is not said enough the chemistry that Roman and Kevin Owens have mm-hmm. in terms of in ring and you know on those mics. Those yeah. guys, it's it's something there. You know, with Roman, I know Roman's a special case for a lot of people, but the the Strowmans, the Owens, um. Uh, 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 the fiend, he 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 has very strong chemistry with them, and then right up under them is like the Seth, you know, the the the, the Drews, the Bobbies. They kind of live in that second tier. But anytime you get Roman and Kevin Owens, it, it's 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 guaranteed to be enjoyable. And right yeah, now, I agree with that. Yeah, it's right now we we you know we got the right version of Roman out there, you know. People wanted to hate him anyway. People wanted to boo him anyway. And now he's giving you a reason to do it. And he's doing it against one of the most uh, lovable guys. Probably the closest thing to Stone Cold we're going to get in this generation. You know, I, I wasn't a fan of them making Kevin Owens do the stunner. Uh, but I, I got the mindset that they were trying to give the fans like, yo, this is kind of going to be that that guy. Even mm-hmm. though if that was Stone Cold, Stone Cold probably would end up winning <laughs> that match. <laughs> but um, like you said, man, the only part, and it was just kind of like obvious. It was like, oh, you know, we can't get these goddamn handcuffs off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, outside of that, and he had to just kind of inadvertently hit the ref with into the lights. That yeah. was kind of funny to me. But, um, you know, just overall, man, the spots were crazy and – they were enjoyable. That forklift spot, oh man, I I thought it was it. Mm-hmm. I it was it. Yeah, same way. I thought it was going to win at that point. I was like, oh man, they are going to go with the sword, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and they could have kind of played hot potato, I guess. Maybe had KO hold it going into Mania. Um, because right now, I don't know where they're going to go. You know, I guess we'll wait and see how, how the end of Raw happens tonight to kind of definitively let us know. But, um, yeah, man, it was a great match. I can't say uh, nothing bad about it outside of that one spot. And you see both of them kind of like, well, Roman was like, all right, well, let me just kind of stand up. That way you yeah, yeah. technically <laughs> count. <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, man, it was it was good. It was good times. I think uh, there's not enough credit that's given to Kevin Owen in terms of just his ability to be able to adapt. Because what no one notices is that when they were trying to count, 
KO went to the ref and was like talking to him and pulling him as uh, they were trying to count Roman then. I think he mouthed with Roman, try and stand up. Because if you know, it's like, it's just like you said, uh, over and over and over, he was trying to stand up. He was like doing like his his knees were together. He like was on his feet technically. Mm. Trying to get up the whole time, whatever, you know, he couldn't. But I think one of the spots in there that was really dope was one, Roman realized he was going too fast because when KO jumped and got hit by the golf cart, Roman backed up because uh, the impact. He backed up because the impact was like, oh, I'm going too fast. And then the Sentai spot was amazing. But I think the reason why this can go over so well is just because when Roman has a good dance partner, he always is well. Like, for example, the last man standing with Big Show that they had, which was probably one of Big Show's best matches, um, that went over well. Uh, a lot of the AJ matches that he did, those went over well because he has a good partner. So when he has a good partner, he can really work and really get in and do great things. So, I mean, it is what it is. I, I was a big fan of the match. The one box still kind of ruined it from maybe like a like a four star, like a three star, like it's probably three and a half stars now. Three quarter, three three quarters. I don't know. Oh, are you gonna give it? Are you gonna go three point seven five? You give it right, like it, it, it's three and a half. No, I go, I go, I go. Uh, I mean, I I'm more critical when Melton goes those point seven five. So it's like, all right, so you are gonna tell me that was not. Cause that's what happened with Charlotte and Becky. That last woman standing, they got four point seven five. You just gave it five star. I hate point seven five. That was, I would say, no higher than four and a half. But it was, if I was to be a bad man, I'd say they they give that. Cause I think their TLC match got four and a half from Meltzer. Not that he's in all be all. Granted, cause, um, but if I was giving my own, I'll just go on a scale of one to ten. I'd go no less than eight for that last man standing match, no higher than nine. That's what I'd say. That's just my opinion, but Joe's entitled to his, obviously. That's why that's why he was probably saying the three and a half, possibly. What were you saying though about that? That were you gonna say why? Uh only reason just because like I feel like the match was kind of rushed. Like we got a spear in the beginning, we got a stone cold stone in the beginning. We got everything in the beginning. It felt like it was kind of Quick it, the pace was quick or whatever, but it, it's fine. It's four and a quarter. It's like four and a quarter star. You know what I'm saying? Like we'll get four to four. Four point two five. Four point two five. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. I'm just happy uh there is no interference from tribal chiefs cousin. Yeah, I'm no J. He wasn't in the rumble either. Is he uh, in some? Well, I'm wondering if somebody, because they've been having problems with these COVID outbreaks lately, it seems like. So I'm wondering if potentially he got exposed to somebody. Um, I will say this, though. Uh, I think I said this in our group chat. That will be another tag team once Jimmy comes back. I personally would have kept the straps on the Street Profits and had them drop them to the heel Usos. That may, that would have been my mania tag match for uh, a SmackDown tag titles. Not to say we can't get them back there. But yeah. I just, at this point, why the hell am I getting Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode as a tag team champion? Don't they have like a weird ass name or something like that? And they probably do. It's just trying to get beer money back, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even be mad at that. It, they could have happened, but I guess, I don't know, James Storm is just, he's too loyal to officially leave Impact or what that situation is, because I know he worked in XT a couple times, but he never got out signed. I'm wondering, um, well, no, they said they can't be her. We kind of got off, I got kind of got off track real quick. I'll get right back on track. They're saying they signed uh, like a top Japanese women's wrestler. They're saying she might be the one that's like that, the hand for Zia Lee and Boa, but they mm -hmm. said she's been in the UK. That still that doesn't mean they can't reveal her though as being that person. Right. Joe would know who she is. I forgot her name. She's a top tier. Uh, damn, what was her name? They just officially signed her, though. From New Japan or just from Glimmer? From I think she's from Glimmer. She's like her early 40s, but I think she like does part bodybuilding. I don't know. You probably... 
Go to, go to the next. Go to the next one. I'm gonna look at. Go to the next. One. Uh, I think we just got uh, the men's match. That's yeah. It's just the men's rumble from here. I was I was going through the order of the thirty opponents, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for the surprises, we got Kane at eighteen. We had um, yeah, Carlito. That's that's not cool, bro. Carlito mm -hmm. at eight, and we had. Uh, I'm trying to see where Hurricane was. Hurricane came in pretty late. He came in at 23. Nico oh, and Christian. And Christian. Uh, Sorry, so that's I what. So, I, I now, I could have done, with the exception of Christian, I could have done without the other surprises. I think we got, uh, well, you know, I know this COVID thing is going on, so I know that probably uh played a role in it as well. You weren't happy about Carlito? I'm surprised. Uh even Carlito said it was 10 years too late. <laughs> well he I mean he left 10 years ago. I thought it was a good surprise. He's he's still in good shape. He's I mean, he's, he's like in the guy great shape. He's, he's 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 like the guy that I've been talking about though. He's one of those guys who's been gone. That's what I'm saying. He's he's in that realm of people where it's like if he comes back he doesn't look like he's embarrassing himself. I don't need to see yes. I.E. Goldberg, like people like that. Yeah, I thought that was a good. I mean, I marked out more for Christian, but I and, I, and the only reason I say that about Christian is because Edge, obviously. So you have mm -hmm. a moment in there with those two guys or whatever. And Edge, and I mean, Christian looked in good shape too. Like you know, these guys, you know, they look they look pretty good. Um, I'm just, I have. a I don't necessarily want to say it's a gripe or a grudge, but when it when it comes to these type of placements, mm -hmm. you know, Sans Carlito and Christian, because I'll give you Carlito. Carlito looked great. You know, Hurricane, that could have been somebody else. You know, that I, I could have took someone from NXT. You know, um, I could have took, uh, that could have been who? Let me just see. Yeah, yeah, Isaiah Swerve Scott, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just, or or, or uh, Velveteen, or you know what I mean? Just I would have liked to have seen more of that because we didn't see any. As I'm going through this list, we saw a couple of ladies from NXT in the women's rumble, but in the men rumble, I don't think we saw any from NXT, with the exception of Damian Priest. But we knew Damian Priest should have been on his way up anyway. Um, I think. Um... Yeah, some of those spots I think there was because so me and Yim got a positive COVID test, so that's why Keith Lee wasn't in the Rumble. Um, so May, that's why they did the Hurricane spot, which is still like I'm, I'm with you. I don't think we need those spots where guys are just or even like I get somebody has to be eliminated quickly, I guess, but I don't. They could have like it could have been an NXT wrestler, um, mm -hmm. could have been anybody. I don't. We like you said. We don't know what happened with Jay Uso. Could have gave it to him. That's why that the hurricane thing. I'm not, I wasn't crazy about either. I don't need to see this every other year almost. Right. He was definitely because he was in there like what 2018 or something. Mm hmm. Just he was, there. he was in there another year too though. I want to say he was in there one of the other years before. Was he in there last year? I want to say he was there last year. He might have been. We have to fact check it, but yeah. Um. He could have gave that to Dream or something like that. I don't do anything with that. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it was moments like that. This was like my only gripe with the Rumble this year is that some of the placements were unnecessary. Like, we don't need to lean on a Goldberg anymore to carry us, you know, into a pay per view. Like, we could have had, I would have much rather took a highly competitive Andrade and Drew McIntyre match. Sure, I know those aren't marquee names yet, but you're not giving them. The opportunity to be marquee names. Yeah. No, I I hope I really agree. You know, if, if 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 Rock would have stayed a Rocky Maivia, he doesn't become the Rock. If right. Stone Cold would have stayed, well, who what was he? The Ice Maker? Well, Ice Ring Maker, Ma Ringmaster. Ringmaster. You know, those aren't marquee names either. But they hey, they they got they took that proverbial brass ring and they broke that glass that glass ceiling, mm -hmm. and that needs to happen. You know, with with some of the the current roster talent that's on there, like you got a ricochet here that, you know, 
he had you know a couple of little spots in the rumble, but he's somebody I think should be utilized a lot more than what he's being utilized as right now. I see main eventer when I see Ricochet. You know, I, why it isn't happening yet is beyond me, but that's what I see. Yeah, no, um, I I, oh, I agree. You knew Ricochet was gonna be long for the Roman when he came out with the uh, HBK earring. Then, <laughs> oh yeah, it's not for long. But um, so just to you know, bring up some more stuff that happened in the uh, men's Rumble. Shout out to Randy Randall Keith Orton. Let me put some respect on his name and the acting job that he did in the rumble acting like he had a knee injury <laughs> uh, you know to the point where i i it, it, i mean it's it's such good shit because it really <laughs> was, that was back behind the ahead. scenes you know what i mean putting ice mm -hmm. on the knee like you know and and then he pops up at the end but you know great just great storytelling just storytelling one-on-one yeah um, no i that was a different start to the rumble like it was extremely hectic you had guys brought outside by the comments every day well, that was pretty funny yeah i think the highlight of royal rumble was for me was the christian because you can say what you want but when edge was gone for a while and it was him and Rand versus randy orton christian was hella over and they had class matches back to back so i was glad to see christian back i mean they were getting the hiatus for a while so glad to see uh christian back db should have won it so he could face the Tribal Chief of Mania because that would have been an awesome match. But, but you can still get that match. So he he didn't technically need to win the Rumble. He didn't need to, but we don't. I don't need. That's another thing. They just. It's another example of people stuffing stats. We don't need. If you don't have Edge win the Rumble, you could have did that last year. Then pretty much that would have been a better story if he won it last year. Yeah, because you still could have got the Drew and Brock. Because you could have got to that simply off the fact that Drew was one that eliminated Brock with the Claymore. So it's like you. I don't, I don't know. I just think sometimes with the booking, it would have made more sense for DB to win from a standpoint that Edge has already won it. Um, it goes back to people being multi – now it's like it's too many multi team Rumble winners because back, the, back then that was special. Outside of Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold, nobody had won more than one until – I think was it – was it Cena? I think Cena was the third person to win too, if I'm not mistaken, because he won 28 – 2008 and 2013. Um, I think those were the only two time Rumble winners at the time, or the only three, but before that, it was only two. I'm not gonna say now it's Orton, now it's Edge. Um, it's just too many. Now, Batista, like all these people have won two Rumble. Like that was, it's it's happening too often. Just give these spots to to somebody. Like Dan Bryan's reached the mountaintop, but it, it just would have meant more because it's like, and Brian's been out for the count twice. Ed's been out for the count once. <laughs> so it would have been just as special for DB to win the Rumble storyline right. wise. Like Ed's lost more time for, on his career, obviously. Like twice as long, but it just I, I'm with, I'm to the point that it doesn't it doesn't help your roster in situations like that to me. Where it's like it hurts guys who are wrestling full time when part timers come back and they're pushing fifty and they're winning the rumble. That's just true to me, because it's like these guys are grinding every week, and then it's like now it's like oh, and anybody can come back and get this. Point. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually glad you brought Batista up because as we were getting ready to have Goldberg versus. Drew McIntyre, I, I think, I don't think I said this in the group chat, but I definitely said it to myself. Like, I would have much rather Batista versus Drew McIntyre. You, you know, just because, me. you right. know, I was just going to say just because he'll, he'll work himself into ring shape. Like, every time he's come back, he was doing matches on Raw, he was doing matches on SmackDown, where he basically was trying to build that, that ring, um, Stamina, stamina up. yeah. You know what I mean? So when they're dedicated like that, I don't mind the return. Don't make me wait on this return for you. Like tonight, Edge is having a match on Raw. You know, 
you're working yourself to build that that ring stamina back up. And I actually like that. If you're going to come back, be a legit comeback. Don't just be a comeback for a pay-per-view. You know, not saying book them on Raw every single week that they're there for the duration of that comeback. But, hey, you know, have them participate or just make an appearance. You know what I'm saying? Where an attack might happen and they get some little small piece of uh, uh, ring action. Right. You know? No, I hear you. No, it's, it's to the point where it's like we need to... Um, they need to be done with it because you could have gave me any almost any formal world champion other than Goldberg if he wanted to use a part time, I would have been fine with it. Um, there's there's certain guys we don't need in these spots anymore because it doesn't really do anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm glad you said Batista because, yeah, even him would have been better than Goldberg. He, he looks more legit. And I think he actually could have had a decent match with Drew. I'm not going to say it would have been four stars or anything like that, but right, right. it would have been more than just you know, oh, Spear Jackhammer. Or in his case, uh, Spine Buster and Batista. <laughs> it would have been more than that. <laughs> right, right. Got some shoulder tackles in the corner. Some right. elbows in the, uh, in the apron. Some uh, body slams on the outside of the ring. Jesus. We got six moves. Batista has six. Shoulder breaker. Uh, I'm I'm awful. Batista shake uh mimicking warrior with shaking the ropes and I wasn't seeing anything from Goldberg. <laughs> exactly. Berg, uh, now he, I'm being disrespectful, I guess. But he whatever. Put up Drew McIntyre. He was like, he's going up. And I was like, no, he's not. You finna drop him on his goddamn head. Get the hell out of here. I'm gonna ruin this, I can feel it. Yeah, no, I, I think Goldberg does not need to try to do the jackhammer anymore. I think the spear should just be his finisher for the duration of his entering career. Because if he if he ends up having a couple more matches, uh, yeah, I don't need to try to see him do the the uh, jackhammer. It's just it's, it's a waste. You're pushing sixty, bro. It's about it's about time to be done. Yeah, it's that time. It's about that time. This can do pedigree forever because it's the pedigree. All right. How much do super kick forever because it's super kick? You can't do the jackhammer forever. True. Oh, True. We're going to get stressed at Mania against Punk. You're going to hit him with the Pepsi Plunge. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the, like I said, Drew oh, was honking man. over Goldberg. Like, it's like, dude. Yeah. yeah. They could have gave us anybody. Why well, we got you, Goldberg? Nobody, nobody asked for that at all. Like at all. <laughs> Chuck Palumbo, and I'd have been okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Palumbo. I'm not gonna go that far, Bucko. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> you could have gave. You could have gave me. Um, you gave me ball head, Sean Michaels. <laughs> 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 so we talking. Um, oh man! But that is the WWE 2021 Royal Rumble. Uh, yeah, you could have gave me. You could have gave me. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna bury him at this point. I was gonna pick the most obscure wrestlers. And we're gonna stop doing that. You can, you can, that's probably why Leon didn't do the, the interview, man. Leon, you could have gave, you, you gave he me heard Shane McMahon. <laughs> he heard Joe say Jay Uso has four moves, and he was like, You could have gave, you could have gave me, you could have gave me Shane McMahon and Drew. <laughs> when, <laughs> hey, don't give me that. Nah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm doing it like uh, that. That would have been better. Uh, right yeah. now, right oh, now. okay. Right now, name me four moves of Jay of Jay Uso outside of the four we already know. Name me four. Yeah, he don't got more than you, four moves. You stop it, okay? Name me four. He got, name he me got, four. He got the Joe. super kick. He got the small drop. He got the little weird. He kind of got the uppercut slap. <laughs> it's not even a real up. It's not even like a legit uppercut. And then like, he got the splash. That's it. He got the leg drop too. He don't got no I leg, leg drop. drop. <laughs> <I'm mad. laughs> nah, bro, he got four moves, bro. He got the leg drop. Listen, 
It's not listen. <laughs> he ain't never, he ain't never it's been when, age, I say, right? when I say someone has a certain amount of moves, Roman I don't doesn't need to like a headlock. I'm just saying, like, I know what I'm going to get. Like, I know what portion when you start to heat up. You've been clotheslining some people, and then all of a sudden, you're going to try and do your four moves of doom. Just like John Cena. John Cena, John Cena had like a fisherman suplex at one point. He had like a German suplex. That dude uh, had like the sloppiest moves set of anybody. Right. When he tried to do stuff, he don't know. He's not comfortable doing. That's why he needs to stick to his five moves of doom. But he that dude it. got the ugliest drop kick ever. He had. I'll be honest, it. man. I was I was anticipating a John Cena return last night, and that didn't happen. Uh, John Cena realized he's getting rich off these movies. He's done, bro. He's he's done. Not only the movies, though, bro, like, John Cena's doing, like, TV voiceovers. Like, he, he got that Honda commercial. He's got that, uh, what's that insurance company? Uh, with the Purple Bull, whatever that is. Like, he's he's everywhere. He got, he got the pistachios. Pistachios. Like, he, he his, out here, man. Bro, his hair longer slick back. He in that new, uh, that new uh, uh, DC movie, bro. He done. He's done. He, he's totally done. He's done. He's definitely done. John Cena gonna show up in AEW Vince Clyde with a heart attack. Even though he, he he threw a little slick shot, I saw it. Nikki was it Nikki Nikki he was dating at Nikki Bella and, and her boyfriend on the West Call it, but on the Twitter feed. But outside of that, oh, I didn't even hear about that. Man, I'm surprised. He just he just mad because like you know Nikki made it last so long. Normally Cena kick out it too. Man. She went and had the baby on the night. Really, like, oh, I'm done, done now. And on that note, <laughs> that's that's a whole nother. That's like a conversation we had through text because she was talking about like how she would call seen that or text seen after her dates and stuff. I'm like, yo, what is wrong with the Bell Twins? I'm like, see, this is why people don't like y'all. At least the men fans. We don't go. This is gonna be a whole new, another rant right now. Let's let's <laughs> let's let's cut the rant off right now. Let's cut the red off right now. This red, because this rapper to get to a whole other can of words. All I'm gonna say is I'm going to send Jay Uso an interview request. Joe's gonna have to do it because the interview is gonna be all about his four moves done. I will say this though, <laughs> y'all gonna be mad. We can cut this out. Nice Jax makes the belt twins look like young bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, we keeping that. <laughs> Y'all know what? Y'all know this new season, we're going to be on YouTube a lot. Like, I'm not editing a lot of stuff out. Like, that stays in there. If you said it, it stays. <laughs> oh, no, man. I'm not getting rid of stuff like we were before. I'm not doing it. There's no cutting room floor this season. Anything you say, Cannon will be held against you. I'm not, I'm not even going to hold you, bro. Uh, okay, so I'll end on a positive note. <laughs> I would say this. Um, in the same vein, speaking of Young Buck, I will say this. I hope they do turn them. I'm surprised they're going with the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega. I think I would have been a little bit more excited if they went with Kenny Omega and, and Young Bucks. We got the Elite versus uh, Moxley, the Lucha Brothers. I would have been a little bit more excited. And I think this can't be a good match at Beach Break, uh, but I would have preferred Young Bucks because it gives them potential tag team champion challengers too, which might be what they're leading to eventually anyway. Who knows? Um, but I would be extremely disappointed too if Lucha Brothers don't win the tag championships this year. Be and if, they if if they don't, then does that make AEW WCW 2.0? Um, yeah, we. I mean, I do think they are putting a lot of guys in positions that are seem like they're either friends or acquaintances. But I do think at the same time, we also are seeing. I was surprised. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, not that the guy was an old, but I mean. Darby's getting that spot though. I'm just gonna say this too. That TNT championship looks better than the one they retired with the black strap. You saw it now. The, uh, I haven't seen it, so they, they did go Look with the black up. strap. They, they they retired the one that Brody or and Cody had. They went with the black strap, and it's like all gold. It looks better. There's like a little bit of red in there. It looks nice. legit. That looks that's like the best. People are fans of bigger belts, but design wise, that's I'd say that's. One of the better belts I've seen lately. That TNT championship they have now. I'll I'll send a picture of it. Um, so yeah, I just okay. I want in on some positive after I completely buried some people tonight. King Gardner's golden shovel. 
appreciate y'all very much. You know what? That's going to become a segment, the Golden Shovel. I like it, KG. I like it. All right, who man. gets Golden Shovel of the Week? Who gets it? <laughs> right. Speaking of which. Go, I, that will be Goldberg <laughs> this week, clearly. <laughs> Matter of fact, we're going to just let – Joe's going to own that. He's going to do WCW and the Golden Shovel of the Week. Because that's what he does. <laughs> He bar- He does two things. He buries whatever wrestler, and he buries the machine. Now he calls him the machine. Uh, we know who he's talking about. Golden shovel guy over there. That's because that dude's weird. Who goes on TV talking about grapefruits and stuff, and they not talking about breakfast? I'm not weird. Like, the machine was weird. <laughs> was weird no, no, no. What was the name you said, huh? The machine. The machine ah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not call, him, call him the mixing. The, the, <laughs> the mixing. I want. I want you to keep this same energy when the day comes, because the day is gonna come when you are at the desk, not the desk, the table, in Connecticut. That's this all, this all I'm gonna say. I said, like, listen, I'm a poor, I'm a poor African American. I'm, I'm a, a middle, I'm a lower middle class American <laughs> male that watches. That watches your product, sir, and I have complaints. Okay, I just have complaints. This doesn't mean you're a terrible person, a terrible human being. I just think that some of the stuff you do is pretty much trash. And matter of fact, most of it on tail end, because I think at some point you're, I think he's getting old and he's losing his touch. It's all right, not a big deal. Now, with that being said, I am going to shut my mouth before I say something that I regret. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna say something real quick. Too. I'm, I'm just gonna say it. Um, I'm, I'm upset because McShane, they send championships to everybody. They want to acknowledge Joe Biden as the commander in chief. <laughs> oh. as, the the, as the head of the table. All right. That's it. That's the one. That's the one. That was the one. That was the one to tell us to go. That was Joe the Biden one. as the head of the table. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's the one. That's the can, one. We, can, we, can we get that meme, please? No. No meme. Individual. Oh man! You know what? Eight. Uh, yeah, that just that right there. Now we're not getting sand. That's just not gonna happen. Not gonna happen gonna look at. This is gonna, they're gonna be like, they're gonna be like that one time. We had to hope that one nightmare. That one time, Cody Rhodes <laughs> just takes a gander at. Kamala go DDT, Kamala go Linda. On that note. Oh no no! What a thank y'all for tuning in. This is oh, number man. one, season three. Make sure you check us out on Instagram at Wrestling Take. No no no, at Hot Take Wrestling. Check us out on Twitter at Wrestling Take. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. We are on SoundCloud and Anchor FM. Joe Freezy said we are going to be on YouTube. So. I'm not sure exactly when this app is going to be on there, but we are going to be on there and we're going to be on there kicking ass and taking names. And Leon Ruff, I'm out here, son. I need your assistance in getting Caden, all right? And I, I know Caden has a, a very large Hispanic male as her view. Bo, how, how do you say that, KG? Bo, view? Yeah, Bo. Bo, I know this, and I know hey, I'm probably going to hey, get my ass hey. kicked. Hey, stop. Get, get get out but the show can... right now. Get us out of the show. Stop worrying about yourself. Fight get Logan. out the show. I'm gonna make me a, I'm gonna make me a shirt. Fight Logan fight. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. So in uh in the spirit of uh who do we say the music we're gonna do? You wanna do you wanna do Virgil's again? Hell no. <laughs> 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 I'm going to reach out to Virgil. Virgil will give us that hot interview. Oh, <laughs> but, oh, man. In, in, this, in the spirit of Edge winning, I think we got to get an Edge and Bianca kind of mixture to, 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 to take us home on this one, okay? I got you. All right. So, not here. Not there. Right. Yeah.
Thanks for listening to the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast. The Hot Take Wrestling Podcast is brought to you by the NMG Network, a division of NMG Enterprises, LLC. Yeah. Yeah.